Oh, some more winter weather on the way. It looks like some snow coming and also some very cold temperatures. We'll tackle each one of those individually this morning. Start with the snowy part of the storm. You can see uh, we did issue some winter storm warnings for Jack the Jackson Valley, also uh, Star Valley, and uh, around that as well, the Tetons, as well as the Salt Wyoming Range, Yellowstone Park, Azorkas, Wind Rivers, also the Pinedale area. Winter weather advisories there, so there could be a decent amount of snow there as well. Now, as we time out the, uh, t the impacts and the types of impacts, travel problems can depend on where you are. The biggest travel problems are western mountains, I think, especially when the snow gets really heavy. This will be the big thing for much of the area, very cold temperatures. These may be some of the coldest temperatures we've seen in several years. Think back to some of the recent cold outbreaks, November of uh, 2014, as well as uh, December and January of uh, 2016, 2017. This could rival it, maybe even exceed it. And blowing snow. I'm going to call that medium again. It depends on where you are. Biggest impact with that across the western mountains as well, where the snow will be the heaviest. Now, as we time out the maximum impacts of that snow, the snow started across the west on Monday night and spread across the Big Piney area on Tuesday. But the biggest impact there probably late Tuesday night to Wednesday uh, morning when that front drops down. That's going to be the heaviest uh, rates of snow. Could be over an inch an hour as well with some strong winds blowing around. The Wednesday morning commute in the Jackson Valley and Star Valley is not going to be any fun. Now those of us east of the divide will be dry pretty much all the way through Tuesday night. Then it comes in on Wednesday as that Arctic boundary drops in from north to south. That'll be when the snow comes in as well. Mainly a morning midday event across northern Wyoming, around central portions of the state, Riverton Lander, as well as Casper, maximum impacts in the afternoon. Those of you across I-80, maximum impacts late Wednesday afternoon to Wednesday evening, with all the snow ending before the sun rises on Thursday. Now some probabilistic stuff. Uh, this is uh, probably the lowest amount of snow we'll see, anywhere from about 4 to 8 inches across the valleys out here, maybe 10 inches the lowest amount across the highest peaks, but things set up right, might not be much snow at all across western portion, eastern portions of the area, I should say. Now the maximum amount we might see, likely maximum amount, maybe up to a foot across the uh, valleys here, maybe up to 2 feet across the western mountains, and uh, east of the divide, anywhere from about 1 to 4 inches depending on where you are. Highest amounts, probably Cody. Casper, if things set up right. Now look at the official forecast for the snow here. Our official forecast is 8 to 12 inches across much of the valleys here, maybe up to 2 feet across the Tetons. That's going to be the epicenter of it. 6 to 8 around Lake Yellowstone, about 3 to 4 around Pinedale. Anywhere from about 1 to 2, maybe 3 inches across many of these other areas. Now I will warn you though, this is going to be more of that banded snow I talk about a lot. So if you hear me talk about banded snow, can't pinpoint it, take a drink right now. I know it's I'm moving this early, it's a little too early to drink, but a lot of uncertainty where those snow bands are going to set. This is the most likely amount of snow, but you get a snow band to sit over you for a couple hours, you could pick up three, four inches of snow. We just can't nail that down this far out. Now we turn our attention to the uh, big story from this. That's going to be the uh, excessive cold coming in. We did issue some uh, wind chill uh, watches across the Bighorn Basin and also across Johnson County. These will probably spread southward as we head through the day. They may issue these in the afternoon, maybe the evening hours tonight. Just about everybody may end up with some of these, except maybe the far west as we head toward a Wednesday night, and especially Thursday, Thursday night. Now we take a look at some of the lows here. Now, ugh, this isn't very good, is it? Many areas on uh, when you wake up Thursday morning, not too bad here across the west, the uh, extreme west. You can see these a lot, but east of the divide, anywhere from about 20 to 30 below zero. Now this is just the air temperature. Not quite as cold here around Rock Springs as well, but coldest areas will be across the northern two-thirds of the area east of the Continental Divide. Now, the cold temperatures will really peak, I think, as we head toward Thursday night into Friday morning. This more time could be some clouds around, may keep temperatures up just a little bit, if you call this keeping temperatures up. As we take a look toward Friday morning, you can see some places 30, maybe 35 below. And it wouldn't surprise me if some of these areas in here, if things set up right and we clear out, could get down to 40 below. Even across the west, 15 to 20 below across the western valleys, even down here toward Rock Springs, anywhere from about 20 to 30 below zero as well. Maybe some minus 40s here as well. Now the big thing is, what's it going to feel like with the wind? Because there will be a pretty gusty wind, especially Wednesday night to Thursday, maybe persisting here across uh, Sweetwater County. This will be the lowest we'll probably see from Wednesday night through Thursday night before we begin to moderate a little bit as we get toward Friday. Yeah, that's real folks out there right now. The wind chill temperatures may be getting down as low as 50 to below zero across much of this area east of the divide. Also across uh, Sweetwater County, not quite as cold across the west, but still anywhere from 20 to 30, 40 below. It's plenty cold, so if you don't have to go outside Wednesday or Thursday or even into the Friday time frame, I know a lot of you work outside and you have to do it, but if you have a choice, just try to stay inside, even stay off the roads, because if you get stuck out in this stuff, it could be dangerous. Here's our resources for weather. You know where to go, weather.gov slash REW for the most accurate forecast in the area. Road conditions, 
We're on the web, wildroad.info. Again, I say this all the time. Don't call us for road conditions. Call these people. This is where we get it from. We have no insider information. You want to call them on the phone, 511 if you're in state, 188 Wild Road if you're out of state. Webcams, go to our webpage, click on local programs, go to our webcams by route, all sorts of webcams all over the great state of Wyoming. Be safe, everybody. Enjoy your week.